So, Gary the Snail is a fourth dimensional alien god, as you'll remember we proved back in February. The one element of Bikini Bottom's quantum anomaly that I forgot to mention though was of course, the Flying Dutchman. This is because he needs his own video, and more specifically both the scientific and paranormal elements of this town need their own videos as well. This green ghost is a pretty aggressive spirit that has some fairly devilish dimensional abilities, and I'm here to analyze his every appearance and, you got it, solve him. Hello, I'm the Theorizer. Considering we're creeping ever closer to my next Mort theory, I have to get myself back into the mindset, and what better way to do that than with dimensional discussions. So, let us go through the Dutchman's appearances and solve him as we do. This is the best way to analyze his case, as more information is added as the show progresses, and perhaps his supernaturality can assist our understanding of the split-dimensional quantum entanglement of Bikini Bottom. We first hear of him in the episode Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost, in which we learn of his folklore. Apparently, when he initially died, his body was used as a mannequin, a desecration which led to his haunting of Bikini Bottom. His body is green and translucent for some reason, aging ectoplasm. But we first truly meet the Flying Dutchman in the episode entitled Scaredy Pants. Mr. Krabs explains to SpongeBob more about the Dutchman, claiming that he actually arrives every Halloween to rip essences out of people and trap them in his soul sack. Pretty horrific. Souls look like pickles, apparently. Aging ectoplasm. SpongeBob wants to be scary, so he dresses as the Dutchman only for the real Dutchman to enter and angrily proclaim that he will steal everyone's souls for such a poor imitation. He has many powers, like energy blasts, size manipulation, the usual, but he himself is scared off when he realizes SpongeBob shaved his entire skull off to appear rounder. I haven't seen this episode in years, if at all, but the fact that I called the whole thing mere seconds into the episode is probably a testament to just how knee deep in this show and adjacent show. I already am. It's sad, honestly. The Dutchman seems to look like a genie, almost, and he is a Devil Deal type entity, but I'll keep that in mind for later. The next time we see him is also still in the first season, during the episode where they find his treasure. We also see his huge ghost ship, which is seemingly a phantom like him. In season 2, he makes an appearance in the shoe tying episode, where he claims to have been a champion knot tire for 3,000 years. He ties a bunch of knots, including one of a possibly sentient monkey. He then references his ghost tail and claims he hasn't tied his shoes in 5,000 years. Assuming he's had no shoes since death, this means he's just over 5,000 years old. He teleports away again. You see the pattern? Little reveals here and there, but now his first important appearance. It's in the Lee 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 episode. Here he warps reality and can create loops, paradoxes, teleportations, etc. He claims his job is literally just to frighten people. Then we get one of the show's most bafflingly terrifying scenes, when the Dutchman opens a rift through the fabric of space and throws Squidward into a dimension of hell containing beings of night nightmares and eternal despair. Based on what we've seen from various other supernatural elements on this show, I can unite a few factors here. The Dolphins and Gary seem to be directly linked to Neptune, the Dutchman, possibly Atlantis, and as I said before, Patchy and the other hyperdimensional inhabitants. Funny enough, Patchy is in this episode's prologue and epilogue. We'll get back to that though after we're done vetting the Dutchman. My first theory here is more of an educated assumption based on what we know of Bikini Bottom's supernaturality and the powers of entities. I believe the Flying Dutchman could be the actual devil, but in terms of this show, I'd be referring more to Hades. Thing is, this show founds itself on Roman mythology, which means the Dutchman would be akin to Pluto, aka King Neptune's brother. If the Flying Dutchman really is a 5,000 year old god of the underworld, I want to encounter counter proof. Comment below. But back to this episode, after SpongeBob and Patrick fail to be scary, the Dutchman threatens to eat them, like gods of the mythologies. To escape, SpongeBob and Patrick run through a portal that crosses through a perfume store in the third dimension, and they get through quick enough to maintain their 2.5 dimensionality. Again, this is all stuff I covered intensely during my three part Gary theory. In said Gary theories, I claimed dimensional aliens and gods are one and the same, taking various forms throughout the reality of SpongeBob. 
The Flying Dutchman seems to be both dimensional and godlike, and he's met our criteria for being a sort of rogue entity, the first real explicit one, unlike the more implicit and theoretical Gary. The Dutchman claims his cousin taught him how to make a tasty sauce, which neither confirms nor really denies his Roman godliness. The Dutchman also shows that he imparts his dimensional abilities on objects he comes in contact with, but get a load of this. The Dutchman offers them three wishes. Tell me again, he isn't a genie or devil. I can't believe I was even on the right track there, but this is everything genies and demons stand for in mythology. For their first wish, the Dutchman clicks time backwards ever so slightly. Squidward has entered the flying spaghetti circle of hell, and SpongeBob wishes him out. With one more wish to go, SpongeBob wishes the Dutchman into a vegetarian. He then pulls the same trick all genies pull, and abuses the wording, turning SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward into fruits. He then teleports them into a nebulous void and tries blending them into a smoothie. I'm getting some answers. Ever since that Gary theory, really anything that has ties to the supernatural in this show ties back to the quantum physics and theoretical notions of scientific gods. So, let's move forward and try confirming some things. He reappears in the season 3 episode Born Again Crabs, in which Crabs tries selling a disgusting patty, eats it himself, and comes extremely close to death, during which the Flying Dutchman plays the role of Grim Reaper by threatening to place Crabs in Davy Jones' locker. Apparently, it's sort of like the bottom of the hyperdimensional depths of Tartarus and Hell, and it's a literal locker, the locker of Davy Jones, who should be the Flying Dutchman himself, but is apparently not. When Krabs fails to maintain generosity, the Dutchman comes back and Krabs sells SpongeBob's soul for 62 cents. The Dutchman hates SpongeBob though, and thus he drops the whole thing. In the next episode, Ghost Host, we get more proof that the Dutchman can be solid as opposed to incorporeal or immaterial, at least by his own will. In this episode, his ship breaks up and crashes. He stays at SpongeBob's house, and now we're on the opposite end of some previously established proof. You see, in Gary's theories, we used this scene to establish his teleportation. In this context, though, it proves another point. Gary, who is an alien god, doesn't really react to the Dutchman. This is because they are similar entities, and the Dutchman cannot kill Gary, hence eating him as a joke and knowing it would do nothing. The Dutchman shows off more powers of reality alteration, and SpongeBob is desensitized to the Dutchman's scares, no matter how high the animation budget climbs. The Dutchman tries scaring other people and shows off a skeleton from inside his body, which is almost certainly not his. His scaring fails yet more, so he has a midlife crisis and parties in SpongeBob's house for six months with his ghost friends while he somehow gains weight and deteriorates. It's implied he's married, too. Then SpongeBob shows him a motivational video to unleash his spiritual power within, and oh my god, the animation budget. His next appearance is in Money Talks, where he's summoned when Krabs uses the phrase, I would give anything. Turns out he'd give anything to have money be sentient and including his own soul. The Dutchman whips out a contract like the quasi-genie he is, and Krabs implies that he sold his soul to many supernatural entities before. I'm not sure if this is clever or extremely stupid of him, but something like that would probably cause problems. His wish is granted, and the money has apparently been aware of everything up until this point, and now it can talk to him. An old woman sees Krabs kissing his money, and she pulls the hole. Get a man who looks at you the way Krabs looks at money. Meme. SpongeBob can't hear the money talking, and apparently now he's the authority on sanity. He thinks Krabs is nuts. The Dutchman comes back later for his soul, but yep, called it. In come the other spirits. They wait in the lineup for Krabs' soul. I don't even know anymore. In the big one episode, Krabs gets stranded past Goo Lagoon in the Dutchman's Triangle, which is apparently above Davy Jones' locker. He literally runs into the Dutchman, who furiously threatens him and claims to have dated Krabs' aunt in high school. This is one whack timeline. I'm not going to try and solve it yet. Somehow Krabs wins their little brawl, and the Dutchman plunges into the sub-ocean ocean and lands on the seafloor where we find the actual Davy Jones with his locker, who begins torturing the Dutchman. So, the question must be asked, what's the org chart of Spongebob Hell? Oh, the places I go. Davy Jones is three-dimensional in his base form, and is seemingly aware of the other dimensions in Quantum Anomalies such as Bikini Bottom. Unlike the vast majority of the surface world, the hierarchy of Hell seems to place him above the likes of the Flying Dutchman, which is peculiar. So is there a Grand Torturer for every dimension's Hell, each one ranking higher than the last? In The Curse of Bikini Bottom, we see the Dutchman in its native habitat. 
hell. With his closet being Davy Jones' coffin. Not only that, but we see a two-dimensional skeleton inside of it, meaning Davy Jones is 2D now. The Dutchman's going on a blind date, his first in 400 years. He plans to wear the coat he was buried in, which has been ghostified. He also shows to have senses such as smell, and puts into question what sort of dimensional state he's really in. Then, debris falls on him and dirties his clothing. So he's solid. Then he phases through the ground to see who knocked the debris onto him, meaning he's immaterial. But the debris is still seen on him when he pops out through the other side of the ground, so he's simultaneously material? If his incorporeity is all according to his mental intentions, then why wouldn't he phase this stray matter off of himself and then prevent the next problem, which is being suddenly ran down by a lawnmower? He says he hates youth, and he's infuriated when it will take a thousand years to grow back his beard after Spongebob and Patrick shave it down. They then literally use the word ghostified. This show is beginning to predict me. By the way, they get the green, they get the tails, and Patrick even comments on how they look like mermaids. Like... King Neptune. Hmm... We get the ghost dynamics through Spongebob's eyes, ectoplasm dynamics, and things about how apparently you can ghostify objects if you conceptually murder them, and he snaps his spatula, for example. The Dutchman's beard comes back. In only a few months, though, and to his horror, the blind date ends up being a spiritually vacant titanic eldritch monster. We've seen it before, but again, in the episode Ghoul Fools, we see that supernatural auras can change the time of day. In this episode, a haunted houseboat arrives and displays ghosts that are not green and do not have tails. They function differently but claim to enjoy enslaving souls just like the Dutchman. They need assistance and they steal the character's souls until they can help them. Once they do, Patrick's soul shatters on the ground and he licks it up, or so we think. Turns out, these ghosts don't take souls, meaning again, they are not like the Dutchman. They can, however, open a portal to a limbo of self-torment, which one of them does to some of the characters. Patrick, as expected, is too changeable to be able to suffer self-torment, and he ends up torturing the very system itself. The the other thing to note is that Mr. Krabs slams into a ghostly chest of money and it cranks his face into the third dimension temporarily. Turns out these guys were the mutinous ex-crew of the Flying Dutchman from 300 years ago. The Dutchman then tracks them down, transforms himself into a nuclear bomb, and blows up Bikini Bottom. This is a direct reference to how Bikini Bottom exists presently. Bikini Atoll testing. It transcends Bikini Bottom into Limbo, which I'm gathering is a pocket negative or non-dimensional plane. The Dutchman proves to be running it, which means it's his domain, and yes, that is likely the experience of Davy Jones' locker from those on the inside. The question I'm still asking is, of course, Davy's role in all of this, but as the devil of the third dimension, it's probably his right to shift dimensionality and torment all denizens beneath him as well. In The Legend of Bukini Bottom, we bear witness to Bikini Bottom having been transformed into what seems to be a 4D claymation on Halloween night. The physics are broken and messed with, we see trippy 3D human hands, and it's definitely all off. SpongeBob's having a great time, so the Dutchman arrives to terrify him. He shows off more of his genie magic and then takes them on a haunted ghost ship tour, where they encounter some literal 4D ghost puppets. Literal 4D ghost puppets. How far have I fallen and how exactly have I internalized this as normal? We see a couple of 2D things in this episode and the sorts of physics breaking hell we bear witness to is quite reminiscent of Squidward's clarinet dream. Could the Dutchman have taken part in that ninth dimensional fever dream as well? The Dutchman emits some gas and reaps everyone's souls just to spook SpongeBob. This episode mixed with my analysis and the fact that I was watching it at two times speed with a three second audio delay has instilled me with the really bad but temporary derealization I am prone to. I notice that he does also reap Gary's soul, and Gary seems concerned. I think I know why. Everyone is 4D here. Gary's body is now on equal playing ground with his essence, and this is why his abilities are neutralized for the time being. The Dutchman shows people some 3D horror footage. The Dutchman turns Plankton into a brainwashed slave, partially possessed by his soul. The Dutchman enters SpongeBob's brain and finds a true 2D world, something akin to Doodlebob. He endures SpongeBob's happy, goofy internal world and is tortured by the flatland around him. It horrifies him and he flees. SpongeBob is the focal point of his world. He owns everyone inside of it. In the episode Shopping List, SpongeBob goes out to buy secret ingredients. What? Do they reveal them in this episode? I guess. Anyways, one of them is Ghost Dandruff. I'm starting to realize why they don't reveal the ingredient. It's probably some high-octane, unapproved hell. Apparently they make shampoo for ghosts also. Turns out they were just fake ingredients. He also makes a cameo in another Season 11 episode, but he's just standing there for a split second. In his final appearance to date, Season 12's The Ghost of Plankton, Karen unplugs herself, sort of dark, then Plankton literally flattens himself to death. 
Okay, even more dark. He becomes a ghost to steal the formula. This episode is integral. The Dutchman shows up and reveals Solidity is controlled with spiritual experience, as I thought. It would seem you gain control over the universe the longer you're a ghost. He teaches him shape-shifting, scaring with face alteration, object possession, and finally, Solidity. It's all about anger and emotion, which is a ghost trope indeed. This episode, and the show in general of late, has a fixation with vivisection, as in the characters will scream their skin off, or their skeleton skeletons will jump out or their nervous system, it's weird. It's fast-paced and gross in general. They're trying out new character dynamics, but all of them feel the same and it's desperate. Budget abuse. Makes for good thumbnails, though. Plankton obviously then can't get the solid formula through the solid safe, so he goes back home. He finds everyone mourning him, must have been days. He says it's the worst of his many funerals he's seen. Hmm. Obviously the Dutchman goes to possess Plankton's body first, but he flees when he learns people want to kill him. I was also casually watching other episodes and in one of them, Squidward screams on an intercom, Run, robots have taken over the world, and nobody moves. Then he says, Our world. And everyone freaks out and runs away. It's like everybody but us, the viewers, know that this is a fictional 2.5D quasi-atomic flatland. The dimensional shifters of Bikini Bottom are all tied, and I'll solve it some other day now that we have the paranormal side of things down. It's all got to do with the atomic testing, the quantum entanglement, the interdimensionality of various animation styles, so on and so forth. It's possible that Bikini Bottom itself is Davy Jones' locker for the third dimension, hell. Neptune, Pluto, etc. Our hell run by Davy himself. So, this turned out to be more Gary Part 3.5 than I was expecting, but honestly, when dimensions get involved, things get real grand unifying up in here. I mean, how else am I supposed to prepare for the next batch of Mort videos? The next in a series of analysis will either be another character diagnosis or the Neptune side of this dimension theory because my conclusions on the hierarchy of SpongeBob Hells are crucial to all of this. The Dutchman is likely Pluto, dead, or not. A sort of banished troublemaker. The genie of legend, but nothing more than a bootleg mermaid. He's a genie or a dead alien mermaid Roman god, but my long-winded diagnosis is irrelevant here. I can only make it more boring than it actually is, but I'm fully prepared now for Mort. See you soon. Until next theorizer, I'm the time.